In this video, we are going to see about research methodology. We will see parts or sections of research methodology overall under four sections or four parts. In today's video, we will see about part one, overview of research. Just to get started, let's see what research is first. As you know, research is an elusive concept it has no any single universally accepted definition. It can be defined differently by different authors from different perspectives. And among others, let's see one definition which is most practical important. Research can be used in any branch of knowledge, maybe in social science, maybe in natural science. And it is a scientific and systematic search for new information on a specific topic we are talking about fundamental research here, or new solution for a specific problem. We are talking about applied research, which involves defining problems, develop hypotheses, data collection, and processing or analyzing through which it reaches to certain conclusions. So this is a definition given for research. Research can be applied in any discipline, in any branch of knowledge, in social science, in natural science, in any de department or discipline. And research can be defined as a scientific and systematic search for information or a scientific and systematic way of finding solutions for problems. In doing so, research involves with defining problems or problem definition, hypothesis development, data collection, data analysis and processing, and through which we reach at a certain conclusion or findings. That's what research is. So having this, what are the motivations of doing research? Why we do research? One, desire to get degree, with its consequential benefits. You students upon your graduation, it is a prerequisite to conduct research or to do a thesis work to get uh, your graduation degree. The other desire to get respect and promotion. Maybe desire to face a challenge in solving problems. Or desire to get intellectual joy of doing something. Or it may be due to the direction of government. So these are uh, motivations of doing research. Now basically let's come to the types of research. Research may be divided in different categories based on different bases. For instance, on the basis of the outcome of the research, research may be of two types. Fundamental research and applied research. The first fundamental research, or it, it may be called as pure research, or it may be called as basic research. It is a research which aims to investigate or search for new principles, new laws, new concepts concerned with generalization and formulation of a theory. The knowledge produced through pure research itself in order to add to the existing body of knowledge, not to solve immediate problems. So here in fundamental research, we do a research for the sake of creating additional knowledge. We are not doing research to solve practical problems. Instead, we are doing a research to add on a knowledge on the existing knowledge or a knowledge on the existing literature. That is a fundamental research or a basic research. The second category is applied research. In applied research, the aim is finding a solution for an immediate problem facing a society or a group or any organization. So here the aim is finding solutions to the immediate problems that we face. The next, on the objectives in undertaking research, Based on the objectives in undertaking research, research can be classified into uh, around five categories. 
and these categories is very very essential later in chapter uh, 3 where we write our methodology so let's have a look on each category the first is exploratory research this is also called formulative research it aims discovering identifying and formulating a research problem or a research hypothesis so here we are developing theories This research is conducted when there are a few or no studies that can be referred such research is required in uh, real uh, situations. The focus is gaining insight and familiarity with the subject area for more investigation at a later stage. Because we are uh, uh, developing a hypothesis, we are formulating a research problem in exploratory research, so this hypothesis can be tested later. And as you know, we test the hypothesis by conducting research that is called a confirmatory research. So, in exploratory research, we are aimed to develop a hypothesis, a theory, new theories. While in confirmatory research, we are going to test the hypothesis being developed by exploratory research. So, this is what exploratory research is. The next category is a descriptive research. It is also called ex post facto research. In a descriptive research, we describe the state of nature or affairs as it exists. So here in a discrete research, we describe what is there, what is happening, what happened, but it does not tell us why it happens. So the main characteristic of such research is that the researcher has no control over the variables. This means that he can only report what has happened or what is happening, but not why. So a descriptive research, as the name indicates, it describes things as it is. It tells us what is happening, but it does not tell us why it happens. It does not study cause and effect relationship. The third is correlational research. In a correlational research, the goal is to determine whether two or more variables are related or not. But here, we have to take care of that. A correlational research does not tell us what variable causes which variable. And it does not tell us the direction and the magnitude or the effect of the size of the effect of the independent variable on the, the dependent variable. It does not explain such a thing. Simply, a correlational research tells us whether two variables are correlated or not. A simple or mere correlation between variables. But it does not explain, it does not tell us cause and effect uh, relationship still. It does not tell us the size, the magnitude of uh, the uh, influence of the independent variable on the dependent variable, it does not tell us. Whereas analytical research or explanatory research, it is also called casual research. The focus is on cause and effect relationship. Because here, it explains the size, the magnitude of the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. A cause and effect relationship between variables. What variable causes which variable? And it tells us the magnitude of the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So it is called analytical research or explanatory research or also it can be called as a causal research. As the name indicates causal research, it tells us the cause and or it aims to find the cause and effect relationship between variables, the independent and dependent variables. The last category under uh, this uh, classification is experimental research. Here in experimental research it explains effect and here there should be a treatment means that there should be a control group and there should be an experiment group. The treatment can be introduced on the experiment group and the dependent variable is measured again after the treatment has been introduced. Here you should notice that there are two groups control group and treatment group or experiment group. You will not expose anything for the control group, but a treatment can be introduced to the experimental group. And you will measure the dependent variable before and after the treatment. 
and you will see the change. The answer is on the basis of the information used in the study. Research under this basis can be broadly classified into two categories, a qualitative research and a quantitative research. The first, a qualitative research, it is applicable for a phenomena that cannot be expressed in terms of quantity. It is used for a phenomena that cannot be measured numerically. So things are related to quality and kind. Research designed to find out how people feel or what they are thinking about a particular institution or subject. So here in qualitative research, we investigate perceptions, attitudes of people. We study subjective matters. And result presented in subjective expressions, not quantified statistical outputs. Whereas in quantitative research, the aim is, is concerned with a quantitative phenomena, things that can be measured and it can be quantified, it can be ex expressed with numerical terminologies. So there's a basic difference between a qualitative research and a quantitative research. And of course, later in chapter uh, three in your research methodology, uh, you are going to specify whether your research approach is qualitative or a quantitative. Another, on the basis of the environment in which the research is carried out, where the research is conducted, research can be classified into three categories, field research, laboratory research, and simulation research. And as the name indicates, the field research means it is a research which is carried out in the field. Most often it is accustomed in agriculture, agricultural areas, whereas a laboratory research is a research which is carried out in the laboratory. Uh, and the simulation research uses models to represent the real world. So in the simulation research, we'll, we are not going to conduct research on actual things, instead on a simulation, on models that can represent the real world. On the basis of the time required to complete the research, research may be cross-sectional or it may be a longitudinal research. When you say cross-sectional research, it is a research at which data is collected only once. And in a longitudinal research, it is a research at which we collect data more than one time and we compare the change over the time. So cross-sectional research we collect data from the target audiences only once. While in uh, longitudinal research, we may collect data more than uh, one time. Uh, we may collect data on several times. And actually, we are concerned with the change of the situation over time. Other types, uh, typologies of research may include action research, case studies, comparative research, multimeter research, and survey research. Uh, so these are the classifications or types of research based on different bases. But generally, knowing whether the research is exploratory or descriptive or explanatory or any other type is a part of knowing what to research. And knowing what to research, knowing the objective of the research is, the key to the first steps in the research design. So you should be take care of that. You should know in advance what type of research you are going to conduct because it determines your research design even. So having this, let's come to the next topic, common objectives or purpose of research. Objectives or purpose of doing research include the following. Generate new knowledge, principle or scientific law. Review and synthesize existing knowledge. Investigate some existing situation or problem. Provide solution to a problem. And construct or create a new procedure and new system or a combination of any of the other. The next is research and scientific method. 
as you know, research methodology and the techniques that you are uh, uh, applying is mostly different from one science to another, or it can be different from research to research. But the philosophy, which is common to all research methodology and technique, is called scientific methods. Scientific knowledge is not based on the opinion, feeling, or intuition of the researchers. As you know, uh, in, when say science, uh, it is a body of knowledge which has its own scientific principles, which is empirical, which can be repeated later, which can be justifiable, and which is uh, based on objective, not subjective measures. In short, scientific knowledge is based on the accumulation of empirical evidence. So research is like this, means that research has its own prescribed procedure. Research should be empirical, research should be verifiable, and research largely depends on objective matters, not a subjective basis or on opinions. So due to this fact, research and scientific methods collide each other. Choosing a research topic. This is the first step in designing a research study. Deciding your topic. Choosing your research topic. Knowing what to research or knowing the purpose of the research is the key to the first steps in a research design, as we have said before. So the first basic thing in conducting research is choosing, choosing or deciding your research topic. Researchers choose the topics that they study in a variety of ways, and their decisions are necessarily influenced by several factors. If your teacher has already chosen a topic for you, your first job has been done. But practically, almost all teachers leave this job or at least part of it up to you. And really, case, practically, every student should choose his or her own research topic by himself or herself. Also, choosing your own topic is more work than having a topic given to you. This extra work allows you to find a topic you are tr truly interested and will enjoy learning and writing about it. Instead of getting a research topic from others, it's better to choose a research topic by your own. But practically, some students, even at master's and doctoral level, they ask others, tell me a research topic that I am going to study for my graduation. But do you think that this is a good practice? No. Do not take me wrong, it is not. You should choose a research topic by yourself because it is you who are going to conduct the research, not anybody else. So you choose a research topic which makes you interested, based on your interest. One thing that we can have a look here is where does the research topic comes from? It may be from your career. It may be through the process of conducting research or while you review the research of others. Or it may be because of the problems that you have faced or observed in your environment. So from these things, a research idea can come in your mind. And some research ideas may also stem from a researcher's motivation to solve a particular problem. Theories we have learned in our academic career can be another source of research idea. So these and other related things provide sufficient motivation for choosing a research topic by yourself. But when you choose your research topic, you should consider your interest plus understanding on the area and the availability of literature on the specific area that you have chosen. Generally, while you choose your topic, it should not be too narrow or too wide, 
to be covered by the available time and your technical capability. So consider these things while you choose your research topic. Now assume you have already chosen your research topic. What's next? Overview of the research process. The first, identification and formulation of research problem. Then, extensive literature survey. Designing objectives and developing working hypothesis. Preparing the research design. And then you should determine the sample design. Then you should actually collect the data from the respondents. Then after data is collected, you should analyze, present, organize the data. In doing so, you have to test your hypothesis, so hypothesis testing, and then generalization and interpretation. Finally, you should report the result. So this is a research process that you should follow while you conduct a particular study or research. In our next video, we are going to see each of these research process. For today, this much is enough. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.